Cutting across to those developments, Hezbollah chief Nasrallah has met with the leaders from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Uh, that's the word really coming in. What exactly does this mean? And does this mean an escalation of the ongoing uh, conflict or the war between Israel and Hamas? Or this could further lead to worsening of the situation? Uh, Abhishek is with us on the broadcast to give us more perspective. Abhishek, what do these developments mean? Well, uh, we can uh, easily know that uh, anything that has happened from the side of Hamas on the 7th of October in Israel was not just a um, one-off thing. It was well calculated, premeditated, and uh, an attack on Israel uh, with all the considerations uh, keeping in mind that what could be the counteroffensive of Israel and how are they going to handle Israeli counteroffensive and from what all front they can distract Israeli forces. And uh, I'm sure, like uh, people uh, or the uh, you know. Groups like Hezbollah were uh, very much involved in this, and uh, one can only see with the, with the latest communication that is happening between the Hezbollah leader and Hamas leader that uh, they are, if they are uh, planning a concerted uh, approach towards the situation right now, if Hezbollah side continues their uh, you know offensives against the Israeli forces, which they have been doing, uh, but not at a scale which is which could be allowed because the Israeli military is uh, retaliating in. Uh, almost the same manner and they have been able to uh, you know, fire at shots or destroy some of the points or uh, some of the you know locations where Hezbollah guns uh, well located some of the watchtowers from where they have, have been keeping an eye on the Israeli military activity so uh, these things have been going on but if Hezbollah and Hamas both try to uh, make a you know common approach uh, a policy to to distract Israeli forces both at south and north Israel uh, it will be a huge uh, distraction and two theaters fighting at the same time will also put a put lot of strain on Israeli military forces. They will have to, uh, you know, stretch their uh, air, 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 air power and of course the ground offensive staff also about 3 lakh of them right now are mostly engaged in, uh, you know, defending their cities in the southern part and mostly uh, they, have, they have also been deployed on the uh, southern border. So. Uh, what if Hezbollah starts attacking or doing some more aggressive posturing on the northern border? Will Israel be able to sustain that? That remains the big question. And how will Israel do that? Uh, so, in, in the entire uh, you know scheme of things, uh, right now Israel's security uh, situation is very challenging with both the sides opening uh, frontiers uh, that is uh, in south, which is uh, Gaza, uh, where Hamas terrorists are holed out. Uh, they, they are hiding, and in north, north that is Lebanon, which is a Hezbollah stronghold from where. They have been continuously targeting Israeli military forces. All right. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, for putting all of that into perspective. Uh, let's also cut across to some more reactions on the story. By the time representatives are done delivering their speeches today, 150 Palestinians will have been killed, including 60 children. In the last two weeks, over 5,700 Palestinians have been killed including over 2,300 children and 1,300 women. Compared to the population of Gaza, that is the equivalent of 145,000 British citizens or 700,000 U.S. citizens. Almost all those killed by Israel are civilians. Over 1 million displaced, 170,000 housing units destroyed. Excellencies, more injustice and more killing will not make Israel safer. No amount of weapons, no alliance will bring to it security. Only peace will. Peace with Palestine and its people. Our freedom is the condition of shared peace and security. It must be clear that this can only be achieved by putting an immediate end to the Israeli war launched against the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. Separate and distinct from the hostage situation and what we're doing to try to get them out. And I want to be careful that I'm not talking about the specifics of the conversations that are going into getting these people out, lest I say something that makes it harder to do it in the future. Put that aside for a second. We have said, continue to say, that fuel is an important commodity for life and sustainment in Gaza for the Palestinian people that are still there. And we know that fuel is a precious commodity that's running out, and you need it for genera generators and hospitals. You need it to run the desalination pumps so that you can drink fresh water and not seawater. Um, all of that is important. Uh, and so we're going to continue to work with 
partners in the region. We're going to continue to push for uh, for fuel to get in. Uh, now, look, that said, I said this again yesterday, we certainly understand Israeli concerns about the possibility for Hamas to abscond with fuel and use it for their own purposes and not allow it to be used in hospitals and desalination plants. We understand that. That is a legitimate concern. No question about it, which is why, again, Ambassador Satterfield is on the ground working this so hard. There's a there's a balance here that has to be achieved.